Hey everyone, how are you all? Welcome back to my channel's tutorial section. In today's video, we'll be learning how to carve a permanent maxillary canine. So let's start. First, we'll start with marking off the aspects of the tooth. Labial, mesial, palatal and distal. Now we'll mark the dimensions of the canine. We know our crown portion measures 10 mm. We'll take 0.5 mm extra to have ease of carving. And now the root length which is 17 mm. Next mark the central axis of the tooth, just a rough guideline. Just connect these on the top of the block. Mark the mesodistal width of the crown that is 7.5 mm but we'll take a little extra about 8 mm. Mark it on the top or the incisal aspect of the block and also on the opposite side. Now we'll cut straight along these markings to the crown length. Mark the labiolingual width of the crown that is 8 mm but again we'll take a little extra about 8.5 mm mark it on the top and also on the opposite side now we'll cut it straight down to the markings of the crown length to make a cuboid make straight parallel wall within the marked dimensions Keep verifying the dimensions. Now to understand the labial outline, first we'll divide the labial crown portion into incisal, middle and cervical third. Now mark the mesodistal dimension at the cervical which is 5.5 mm. Now we should know that from the labial side, the mesial outline has convex outline starting from the cervical to the crest of contour which lies at the junction of the middle and the incisal third and then makes a short mesial slope of the crest. Distal outline has a concave outline starting from the cervical to the contact area which is at the middle of the middle third and then makes a longer distal slope of the crest. Now make a cut or notch at the cervical markings on both proximal sides. These notches will mark the start of curvature or the contour that we require. Don't worry about the curvature of the cervical line, it will be made later. Now we'll make the convex outline of the mesial side till the crest of contour which is at the junction of middle and incisal third. Notice the angle of the carver I'm making to develop the curved surface using the flat side of carver. It is a very gradual curve. Now the mesial slope from the tip to this crest. Keep the tip slightly towards the mesial. Mesial slope will be shorter than the distal.
observe the mesial outline now the crest of the contour and the mesial slope Okay, now we'll do the distal outline. First, the longer distal slope, which is till the middle of the middle third from the tip. Remember, the crest of the contour is not formed by two straight lines making a sharp angle. It's a curve, so gradually approach it, forming a curve. Now from the cervical to the crest, here we'll start with a concavity at the cervical and then a convex curve. Just even up the slope from the multiple carving lines on it. Verify outline on the opposite palatal side and do the corrections if any. Keep cleaning to visualize better. Now, as you develop the cervical concavity, the convexity develops by itself below it. So, we are done with the gross outline from the labial aspect. Now we'll do the outline from the proximal surface. But first we'll mark the labiolingual dimension at the cervical which is 7 mm. We'll make the notches as before. Clean all the wax flakes. Now we should know that the label outline has a crest of contour slightly incisal than what it was in the incisors. We can keep it at the junction of cervical and middle third and from here it follows slightly convex outline till cusp tip. Remember, 
the cusp tip is slightly to the labial, not in the midline. Broadly, if we see, it has more convex outline than the incisors. Now on the lingual side, the crest of contour which is cingulum lies more or less at the same level of the labial side. Then it straightens slightly in the middle and then convex again in the incisal third. Like this. So let's proceed with the carving. So we have to make the crest of the contour at about here. Slightly contour the cervical notch we have made earlier to gently approach the crest. Now the incisal two-third, cusp tip lies slightly labial to the midline. Here we need to mark the midline again. Using the flat side of the carver, start developing the curve from crest to the tip, which will be kept slightly labial to the midline. Start in the incisal third first, approach the midline and then proceed to the middle third developing the crest of contour at the junction. Run cover to the full width of the tooth. Keep observing the curvature. Still the crest of contour seems too broad and flat. We need to contour the incisal two-third a bit more. Approach to the midline but still keep it slightly to the labial. See the contour now? Always observe the contour from the both sides. Keep contouring the incisal two-third above the crest of contour. Always observe the contour from both proximal sides. It's grossly done, but still we need to develop the crest on the labial side. We'll start with the lingual outline. 
Start with the incisal third first, the same way as on the labial, approaching the midline. We have to keep a convexity here. Also remember to keep it to label. Now start approaching the crest of contour at the same level and same way as we did on the labial side. Let's keep the middle portion flatter than the labial side. Crest of contour is at the same level as of the labial that is slightly above the junction of cervical and the middle third. See the outline now. Now we'll develop very slight concavity here. Always use this curved side for developing the concavities. Keep developing the middle surface which will automatically develop convexity in the cervical third. Always keep cleaning the wax flakes to visualize better. I am really sorry for the blur here. Here we are working on the middle only. It's very important to visualize the outline from both proximal sides. Now keep the incisal close to the midline. 
carve a little more. Now see the canine shape coming. Just little correction with the bulge here. See the gross shape achieved now. Before proceeding, we'll clean up the mess first. We'll make the labial part a bit more curved. Remember to develop the image of desired curvature. Observe natural teeth. See the curvature in the outline now. Slight flattening of the concavity and reduce the thickness of the incisal edge. Observe the shape achieved now. Now we'll develop the labial and the lingual side. The incisal aspect will give us the view of both. So let's proceed. We have kept the tip to the labial. We'll keep the cingulum in the middle, mesodistally, and we'll make equal mesial and distal marginal ridge. Label we'll discuss later. Let's start with the gross carving equally on both sides, keeping cingulum in the middle. Make a V-shaped lingual outline from the incisal view. Now see the movement and the angle of the carver. It is towards the midline. Means it's tapering to the midline from the crest of contour. It's actually moving in the direction diagonally from the outwards.
We'll round off these sharp line angles first. Just gently run the cover. We'll proceed to the labial outline. This is the distal side. It has a slope from the midline, giving a stretched look compared to the mesial side, which is due to the concavity found in cervical third. It's appreciable from the incisal view. On mesial side, it has a convex outline as viewed from the incisal. A well-developed mid-labial lobe shows a ridge in the midline with shallow depressions on either side of it in incisal half. So we'll make a prominent ridge here. First we'll make the convex outline on both aspects by rounding off the respective aspects of the labial side. Use straight side of the carver. Carefully observe the movement of carver. This is to maintain the contour we have already developed. Get it close to the midline. Keep approaching the labial midline. Same movements on the distal side too. Keep cleaning always. See, we still need to develop that prominent ridge. One thing we can do is to mark the midline again. It will help to develop the slopes by approaching the midline. Continue developing the slopes. Make sure you carry the cover movement till the cervical also, only then your contour will be maintained.
you see this patch bridge is here and the untouched area is here Clean again. See the prominence coming. Look now, we need to develop it further. Notice the angle of carver again. See how I am approaching the midline. So we are done here with the gross shaping. From labial side if we see, we have three lobes, mesial, middle and distal, separated by shallow depressions. So now we'll develop shallow V-shaped depressions just like we did for the incisors. On the mesial side, don't take it to the full length of the crown, keep it till the middle. We'll blend it later. Now also on the distal side, the cervical portion also has depression which is visible from the incisal view too. This will make a well developed middle lobe.
you can use the discoid end to merge or you can use the zell carver to blend or simply an earbud Still we need to merge the mesial depression a bit more with the middle lobe. Even though we are developing the depression in the incisal half on the mesial side, it will still give a convex outline from the incisal view, which will be due to the convex cervical portion. Now we need to work on the distal side too to blend and develop depression. The labial ridge is slightly curved and in the middle it is inclined to the mesial. We are developing the depressions in between the lobes. Now we can appreciate some desired outline. Now on the lingual side, we have cingulum in the center, which has a prominent lingual ridge till the cusp tip. It has mesial and distal marginal ridge, slightly lower than the lingual and it has depressions on either side. First we'll lower the level of marginal ridge while approaching the midline. Same will do on this side too. Keep in mind to maintain the concavity and slope.
This way, we are also reducing the thickness of the edge. See, we've got the prominence of the lingual ridge. Remove the wax flakes. Now we'll do the lingual area. We'll make the lingual ridge with depressions on either side. First, we'll round off all the sharp line angles to give a smooth surface. Give gentle carver strokes. Do the same on the other side too. Okay, let's see now. Here we see that the incisal edge is a bit thick. We'll reduce it. We need to do it from the label too. Okay, so now we are ready. A maxillary canine has a ridge over here. For that, we'll develop the depressions on either side. The depressions will give rise to the ridge in the middle, which will connect the tip to the cingulum. I would suggest a better cover for this, the Zal carver. We just need to carve out a subtle depression. Now as we do that, it will also develop the marginal ridges and the incisal ridges. The lingual ridge should be emerging above the marginal ridge. If you see, we have already carved the marginal ridges a bit down. Observe that my strokes are extended a little to the side of cingulum. This is just to blend the depressions. Keep merging the lingual ridge with depressions. Do same on distal side too.
Keep carving the lingual, marginal and incisal ridges. See the slight depressions. Make the ridge narrow at the tip. We can see that we are getting the lingual ridge higher and the marginal ridge a bit lower. Keep developing the depressions which will develop the ridges around it by itself. Make sure you also keep them blended, any sharp groove will be difficult to manage. Observe the lingual ridge and the depressions. See the flat portion here, we'll get it convex. Carve the cervical to get the convex above. Round off all the line angles here. See we got the convex bulge at the cingulum. The depression and the raised lingual ridge. Continue blending the depressions with marginal ridges and the lingual ridge. Keep cleaning the wax flakes. Keep blending. See for any correction on the label side. It looks fine. Just the distal portion looks a bit thick at the incisal. Making it thin, approaching the midline and following the achieved anatomy. We need to keep the distal incisal ridge or the slope towards labial.
See now, we just need to smoothen everything. Sorry, I forgot to introduce to you this cover. It's Zal's cover. It has a knife on one end, while another end has a curved, very slightly pointed tip. Need to do just a little on the measle too. Don't rub with too much pressure by cotton. Grossly blend with the blunt back of the Zal carver or the leek run carver. You can also use a soft paint brush with pressure also. Keep blending. Measle slope has slight concavity which gives another identifying feature to determine its side. See the concavity now. As we made the concavity, the incisal slope got thick. We'll carve from the labial and the palatal side to make it thin again. Okay, so we are done with the crown portion. Now we'll proceed to the root carving. 
First we need to mark the root length again if it has faded. Root length should be 17 mm. From the labial aspect, root is slender and tapers evenly to the root tip from both sides. With slight distal tilt of the root tip, also the root is slightly wider on the labial aspect than lingual aspect. From the proximal aspect, the labial outline is very gently tapering till two-third and then tapers sharply in the apical third, while the lingual outline is slightly inclined to labial with sharp inclination at the apical third. Here the root tip is not in the line with the cusp tip. As we know the cusp tip lies slightly labial and the root tip follows the midline. Now we'll first cut the excess straight down from the cervical to the marked root length. Mark the root length by making notches. Cut straight down from the cervical to the root length on all sides. Now we'll do the corners, straight down from the cervical line, here we should remember that on palatal side root is narrower and on label it's wider. Also remember it's mesiodistally narrow and elongated labiolingually. Let me clean up before proceeding. So now we'll be making the label aspect of the root slender and tapering towards the tip. First of all, we'll mark the cervical line cause the root from the labial and lingual aspect will be starting from here. The curvature of the cervical line will be higher on mesial side and lower on distal side. This pattern is common with every tooth. On mesial side, the curvature will be 2.5 mm will mark it. Just approximate marking will do. On distal side it will be 1.5 mm. Well my divider cannot take less than 2 mm so just making an approximate marking. So our crest of curvature will be lying here. First we'll straighten the root from the cervical a bit. Just scrip the cervical line up to the marking, connecting the label cervical line to lingual. Need not to make it pointed, make it subtle. The cervical line should be starting from the label, follow the curvature and continue to the proximal. Keep carving along the cervical line. Keep 
clean the wax flakes. Now just carve straight down from here, just to find the cervical. Now carve straight down to the root length following the taper to the tip of the root. Keep in mind the middle line, just keep close to the midline to give a taper. Start from cervical and carve it down. Now the distal side, the same way from the curvature marking. Just carve straight down from the corners. We should also remember the lingual aspect of the root is narrower than labial. Also move the carver from the mid labial to lingual side to make the lingual aspect of the root narrower. Now let's clean again before proceeding. So we'll proceed with the tapering of the root and the slight distal tilt at the apical third. Keep carving with gentle strokes to develop the taper.
making the root narrower from the palatal side. Here we are done with the gross outline from the labial and the palatal aspect. Now we'll shape the root from the proximal aspects. As we have discussed earlier, the labial outline tapers very gently till two-third and then tapers sharply in the apical third, while the lingual outline is slightly inclined to labial with sharp inclination at the apical third. Also we have told earlier that considering the mid-axis, the root tip is in the midline and the cusp tip is slightly labial to the midline. Carve more at the apical third. Keep checking for the taper. Now the palatal outline. Here we are done with the gross outline from the proximal aspects. Now we'll round off all the line angles with gentle full length strokes from the cervical to tip. Also, we are developing the slight distal tilt of the root in the apical third.
Now we are just rounding off all the sharp line angles. Just smoothing everything. Just redefining the cervical line. The root of the canine has shallow developmental depressions on both proximal sides. Now we'll make the depressions to the length of root. Keep it short of cervical line as well as the root tip. I'm using the curved end of the Zals carver. You can also use the discoid end of the Lacron carver. Use clean earbud to make it even. See, we've got the shape of canine. We're just clearing off all the sharp line angles at the root tip. So we are done with the maxillary canine carving. Observe all the details in every aspect and try to carve one. I hope this video was useful, so keep watching and keep practicing.